This video is sponsored by Schoolytix. Google Classroom is great for assigning and collecting work, but how awesome would it be if you could create a progress report in seconds that could be shared with your students? Or if you could see who has turned something in late without having to actually open up the assignment? Or if you could send an email to all of your students in all of your classes with links to all of their missing assignments in literally seconds. With Schoolytics, you can do all that and more. Schoolytics is an all-in-one information hub that is basically your Google Google Classroom personal assistant. Nearly everything I share today is on their free teacher plan. You can actually just sign up with the Gmail address that you have connected to your Google Classroom. And the first time that you log in, it'll just ask you which classes you would like to sync with Schoolytics. You can pull in up to 10 of your Google Classroom classes on the free plan and up to 100 on the pro plan. And I pray that none of you need to track 100 Google Classroom classes. When you log in, you'll get to this home dashboard and I'm gonna to get to this in a second but the one feature that I saw that I'm like this is gonna save teachers a ton of time was how quickly and easily you can message all of your students with their missing assignments traditionally in Google classroom you would go over to the grades and then you would click on one of your assignments and then you would sort it by the status and then you would check all the students that are missing it and you would send an email to them and you would have to fill in the email with any information that they would need or maybe from the grade book page you actually went over to that student and then you saw all of their missing assignments for that class and then you sent them an email and then you could even include a student work summary and it'll list out the assignments but the student wouldn't even be able to actually click on the assignment they would have to go search for it on Google Classroom so it creates a lot of friction with Schoolytics I just hop over to the missing assignments report and right off the bat I can see all of my students in all of my classes and how many assignments they have missing I can also filter by my class if that's helpful for me I'm gonna keep it for all of my classes right now and if I click on this bulk message missing assignments it gives me a template that it's going to use to send custom emails to each of my students I can see that it's gonna to go to all eight of my students you can CC the Guardians on the pro plan but let's say I'm on the free plan so I'm gonna keep that blank and then you can adjust the subject line and it will say the student's name and the email that gets sent to them as well as a message about their missing assignments and they can review their assignments on Schoolytics, which they can have a free account as well, which I'm gonna get into. And then it lists the assignments that that student is missing in their personalized email. And that list is clickable. When they click on it, it'll take them directly to that assignment in Google Classroom. You're removing barriers to students actually completing the work by making it easier for them to find what they're missing. If your students are too young for email or they don't check their email, you can go over to the stream and then it'll do the same thing, but it's just gonna create a custom message in their Google Classroom stream with the links to the missing assignments that they have. No one else is gonna see this message in the stream, only the student will see it. So I'm back on the home dashboard and you're gonna notice that anywhere on Schoolytics, you can customize the data that you're looking at to show data based on the time period, on the start and end date. You can actually show data for specific groups of students. So maybe you have a group of students with an IEP or a 504 or some other custom education plan and then you can add those students to this group and then whenever you are on Schoolytics, you you can now sort the data to say, okay, whatever I'm looking at, I only want to look at it for this group of students, which is super helpful. And of course, you can filter by class. So let's take a look at world history for now. So I can see that I have 42% of all of my world history assignments graded. I can see that 74% of my world history assignments have been completed. And I can see that 40% of the assignments have been turned in on time. My world history class is a procrastinating bunch or maybe this is a signal that I need to be allowing a little bit more time for the assignments if I have such a low percentage of students completing their work on time. Down below, I have my list of students in my world history class and I can see their individual statistics as well. When I go to this drill down column, I can actually see the student profile and get a more comprehensive look at the data for that student in this particular class. It shows me lots of the completion on time rates, other trends that I might be interested in, and I can turn this into a progress report 
report that I can share with the student or the guardian or anyone else that I feel could benefit from seeing this progress report. And it generates a Google Doc that has all of the information that I need from top assignments, the actual assignments. These are links to those assignments inside of Google Classroom. So you could easily be able to take action on this progress report if needed. Up at the top here next to the summary, I have assignment categories that I can explore for Courtney. And on the right side, I have my different topics. Now Courtney is doing in these topics overall. Topics are the general way that a lot of teachers will organize their assignments and posts inside of Google Classroom. But you'll notice when I click on one of these, I actually have a couple of tags inside of the description of the assignment. Hashtag world history, hashtag quiz, hashtag practice. The reason I'm doing that is because with Schoolytics, I can now explore assignments based on what tag they have. So if I wanna explore how Courtney is doing specifically to any assignment with the tag world history or any assignment with the tag notes or any assignment with the tag quiz or any assignment with the tag week five, however I want to set it up, I can now sort and filter my assignments using that tag feature. And you can see the student log up here as well, which is going to let me track any communication that I have with Courtney or her guardian. And the nice thing is if her other teachers are using Schoolytics, I will see all of their correspondence logs with Courtney as well. So that way we're all on the same page. I can begin to spot trends that may be happening outside of my classroom that maybe I would not have noticed otherwise. Regarding ungraded work, traditionally in Google Classroom, I know most teachers use the review feature and you could of course sort by all of your classes or by specific class. And then as you go through here for something like prehistoric times, I can see that that I've graded two of them. One of them has been assigned, but it hasn't been completed. So that's a missing assignment. And one of them has been turned in, but I don't know who has turned it in until I click on it and say like, oh, Courtney's turned it in. Let me go ahead and grade it. Now let me go back to my review and continue working through any other assignments that I have not graded yet. Back on the Schoolytics homepage, you'll see that I've got this little action item right here that says grade 45 assignments. When I click on that, it shows me the student name, the assignment title, the assignment status, and when the assignment was turned in. By default, it is sorted so that the most recent thing that's turned in is at the top. But you could also filter it by the assignment status so that way you're only seeing resubmitted work. So that way if students are working something and iterating it and you wanna provide that more immediate feedback for them on their resubmissions, you can do that or for the student that turned something in two months after the assignment was due. And maybe you didn't scroll down far enough on the review section of Google Classroom to be able to see it. This ensures that you don't miss any of those assignments. When you click on the actual assignment right here, it'll take you to Google Classroom where you can then input the grade there and see any attachments or documents that the students have submitted. If you ever wanted to reuse an assignment from a previous semester, you usually had to use the reuse post right here, find that old assignment, scroll Scroll through until you maybe see it and you're scrolling through all of the posts and all of the assignments from that class, click on it and then unfortunately you can't actually see that assignment or any of the details or anything like that. You just kind of have to hope that that's what you're looking for and then commit to reusing it right there. Not ideal. In Schoolytics, you'll see this library section right here that allows you to search through all of your assignments that you've posted in any of the classes that you have linked to Schoolytics, including archived classes. So I want to go into assignment history and look for an assignment that I know. I remember I had algorithms in it. So algorithm. Okay. Yeah, that's right. My algorithm art assignment. I can click on it. See, is this the assignment? Yes, it is. I want to go ahead and use this in one of my classes. I can now adjust everything. This looks really similar to the Google Classroom interface. And then if it looks good to go, I can add it to classroom. I can say which classes I want to add it to, and then I can assign it now or schedule it for later. But what's really cool is Schoolytics allows you to share share your Google Classroom assignments with other teachers, even if they are not teachers at your school. So if I wanna do that first, I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my shared workspace folder by clicking on my workspace courses. I've got a math folder that I wanna share with other teachers and inside of there, there's a computer science integrations folder that I think this algorithm art would be a good fit for. I'm gonna move it there, close out of this assignment. And now when I go to my Schoolytics workspace, I can invite whoever I want to this shared workspace. And if they are not already connected to me, I can just type in their email 
and it will send them an invite to be a part of this shared workspace. So now when they go into Schoolytics, they can go to their library and see this shared math folder, the shared computer science integrations folder inside of there. And then they have this algorithm art assignment available to them that they can add to their classroom. So useful, so collaborative. It's one thing to be able to have all this data available to you as the teacher, but you can also empower your students as well with their own free Schoolytics accounts. Their home dashboard has just about all the same data that you see on your end, but of course they're only seeing their own assignment data from completion rates to on time rates. They've got this missing assignments section over here on the right. And this allows students to more easily see their areas of progress and areas of growth more easily than what they'd be able to see directly in Google Classroom. There's also a guardian portal so that guardians can keep up with all of their kids in one spot. If you've got more than 10 Google Classroom classes that you wanna keep track of, or if you'd like to be able to generate progress reports for multiple students at a time, the Teacher Pro plan is $10 a month. They also have custom school and district plans where you can not only connect Google Classroom to Schoolytics, but also your other LMS like PowerSchool or Canvas and start analyzing that data. And you can even migrate your Google Classroom grades over to your LMS book with a click. So it's worth checking out. As a Google teacher, you may not know about some of the recent updates to other Google apps. So check out this video where I share some of the updates that you may find helpful if you use Google Docs and Google Calendars. And I also have one additional Google Classroom update in that video as well.